Well, it is Christmas, anyway. <laughs> uh, welcome to Cattle Pin Bowling, and as usual, it will be three strings with total pinfall determining our winner. And as you can see here at the fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, where we welcome you, it is Christmas, as you can tell. With the decorations that are all around, that's just a small sample of what you see when you come in here. Again, we will remind you that uh, those trophies are permanent souvenirs provided by the H Trophy Company of Boston, and uh, one will go to each of the bowlers. Obviously, the slightly larger one will go to our champion. We also have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 goes to the winner. $350 goes to the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, should they tie, they split that at $25 apiece. There's an extra $100 for going over $400, and both of our bowlers are aware of the 400 on the part of Jack Sanek. He did that last week. On the part of uh, Don Santiago, I'll explain when I talk to him why he's aware of 400. We have uh, four $50 gift certificates here from Eastern Clothing Company of Watertown. Uh, one each to the winner of uh, each string and one to today's uh, runner-up. A $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. And that will go to the marksman of the day, the bowler with the most marks. All right, let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? Hi, Dal. How are you doing, Dal? Good. And the reason I was mentioning the 400 is because I was just looking at your record, and we have not been nice to you at all. We have given you Danny Murphy, Tom Osa, and Dick O'Connell to face, and each one of them rolled a 400 or better against you on the three times you were on before, and you were rolling your average or better every time. So, um, I, you know, I, I, all I can say is I wish that you can bowl as well as you're capable of, but at the same time, I have to say that to Jack, too. You know? Yeah, the trend continues. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah, uh, you would, because you, you rolled your 400 uh, last time. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, but the first time I saw you was when your dad was on, and it was uh, at the Boylston Bowler Drome right near Fenway Park, no, and you were so nervous. Brother. Was it? Was my I thought it was you, the first time was you, and you were so nervous in the back, you were pacing back and forth. Uh, I was here, <laughs> very nervous all the time. It's well, listen, the uh, uh, <laughs> let's hope that both of you get all kinds of bonus money for uh, our Christmas present to you, and somebody wins by, well, two or three cents. All right? <laughs> good luck to you, and good luck to you. And we'll get underway right after this. Today's challenger, Donald Santiago of East Falma. Donald has a 123 league average. He's representing the Cape Bowl of Yarmouth. He had a 698 in winning his roll-off. Right now, faced with Diamond, plus 10 on the right, and the 7 over on the left. Two full. It's an eight box. Don's one of the few cattle pin bowlers who has been able to achieve a 200 high single, and his triple is 464. He's employed by the Botello Lumber Company, and Donald is a divorced father of one son. Came close to making a spare as he picked up the one, two, eight, but he leaves the ten. And still leaves it for a nine. Now our defending champion, Jack Sennick. Jack drops eight with the first ball and leaves the two and the seven. He makes the spare. Jack won his title last week by rolling a 401 and defeating Biff Cardran. He gets nine, leaving the four pin. Is it two? It is. Oh, 
Our challenger, Donald Santiago, fires a hammer. He gets an eight pin drop with the first ball as the two and four to convert for a spare. And he has it. Jack Sanek hoping to make three marks in a row for $50 in bonus money. Seven is the fill, and he has a piece of favorable wood, which will probably allow him to make this side saddle triangle made up of the three, six, and nine. He has it. So give him $50 in bonus money. Last week, he was able to pick up $300 in bonus money. Bonus picks up five more, leaves four horsemen left side and the opposite corner of the 10 pin. Just the one and two. Now you will concentrate on four, seven. Has them, slid a piece of wood over and darn near got the 10. First check on the scoreboard after four boxes of the first string. With a bonus ball still to be thrown by Donald Santiago, our challenger from East Falmouth, Massachusetts. The score after four is Jack Stanek 60, Donald Santiago 47. Our challenger, Donald Santiago of East Falmouth. Hoping to make it three marks in a row for a bonus of $50. He has a shot at it. The fill is eight. And he will be faced with, if the wood doesn't get in the way, the five and the nine. Waiting for rolling wood, just to the left of the five pin. For a mark? Yes, he has it. And give him $50 in bonus money. Six, leaving the four horsemen on the right side. One, three, six, ten. Just missed the head pin and punched out the three and the six. It's an eight box. Each of our bowlers has been able to establish three marks in a row for a bonus of $50, but was unable to continue it for any subsequent mark. Jack Sennick downs everything except the three pin. He has another mark. Open in the fourth with a nine box, but marks everywhere else. Seven. Four pin and the three and three and six, and he was able to dance it across towards the four, but not enough to hit it. in to pick up for a 10. $850 in our home viewer jackpot. 
$275 in our high-low jackpot. Every time Jack gets ready to move, that piece of wood besides it wants to roll a little bit. But he made it. Now Don Santiago. Don, there are so many different styles, approaches that bowlers have. His is, is unique. I cannot think of another bowler who bowls exactly the way he does. A strike. And but what I mean by that is uh, it's basically what would be considered a sort of a closed stance for a right-handed batter. In other words, the right foot is back about a foot from the left, and he's almost side saddle. Oh, so close to getting two strikes in a row. He has the ten pin to pick up with wood all around it. Now he takes that stance and fires and has it. Oh, a little dangerous, and he knows it, and you could tell by the reaction of the gallery here. Al Gilio keeping score on that big scoreboard, and Keith Williams keeping score for the folks who are here watching in person. The two pin and the six. That's a tough angle to make. Got the two. He has a two pin spare leave. Ralph Stewart calls time and goes down to take a check on a piece of wood to see whether it's behind the deadwood line. There are actually two pieces of wood which are close to it, but he indicates that they are both behind the deadwood line, which, as I've told you before, is exactly two feet. He made it two feet from the center of the number one pin coming toward the bowler. If they are behind it and not touching it, they stay. If they touch it or there's this side of it, they have to be removed. Donald Santiago has two marks that are always working on a spear right now. And strike on spare. And he missed by one pin of having three strikes in a row. That went off to the right. He got four. Four horsemen plus the eight and ten. So close to getting them all, but he has left the ten pin. It's a nine box. So Donald Santiago opens with an excellent 147. Jack Sanek picks up seven more as a fill on his spear. He's left with the one, two, four to convert. Our crew today is Skip Peabody, Roger Rice, Dick Erickson, Steve Colvin. And back in the studio for post-production videotape editing, Doug DeWitt and George Ellard. Ralph Stewart, our law blind judge and referee. And I want to tell you, if you can see those socks, those are candy canes on there. Not quite. You talk about being prepared for Christmas with candy canes on the socks. He puts my jacket to shame. 124 opposite 138 through 9. See what Jack can do here. Boy, he wanted to see that 8 pin go down. He's got 8 and 10.
He gave it a try. The rest of our crew, Don Riley, of course, is our statistician and coordinator, and Phil Rubin is our producer and director. So, uh, the winner of the first string, who wins the $50 gift certificate from Eastern Clothing Company of Watertown for men's clothing, and also another $50 in bonus money, is our challenger, Donald Santiago of East Palace, Massachusetts, who leads Jack Sanek of Quincy, our defending champion after one, 147 to 133. In the middle string, our defending champion leads it off, and trailing by 14 pins is Jack Sanek. He has just two pins standing, however, it's going to be tough to convert because one of them is the four pin and the other one is the ten. Now, a couple of pieces of wood have, well, they haven't decided where they're going to go. I guess there they are. They're stopping about where the three pin would be and they're forming a bit of a V. So let's see what he can do with that. That's what he can do with it. He split them and got the four and the ten. Bonus, and he didn't like it as soon as he released it because he knew he was missing the head pin. Gets five. Across the back, it's seven, nine, and ten. Out front, it's a one and three, and everything goes except two. It's a nine. Our challenger, Donald Santiago. He's got the diamond to work on, diamond right, made up of the two, excuse me, three, five, six, and nine. Punched it out. So I guess we have to say, the diamond wins again. An eight box, nowhere near at that time. Got a break. As first the three went down, and then the nine, and he's left with just the seven pin. And he's all over it. A spare in the second. Now Jack Senek, today's defending champion. This is tough. Five and six side by side, eight, nine, and ten in the background. He used the wood from the left hand side, but got just three of them. It's a nine. Another veteran Candleton bowler will be our challenger next week. Bernie Duhamel. Four horsemen plus left side plus the eight pin. Nope, unable to do it. An eight. Donald Santiago leading by seven as our challenger, and he will add to that. How many more? He's adding six more, plus uh, the fact that he's opposite a nine box makes it seven more, so that'll bring him up to a 14 pin lead. And he converts it for another mark.
Very thin head. He managed to get four out of it. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, ten, and a lob. So it's a four box. The box gets him just four. And the score at the uh, end of four boxes here in uh, the middle string, after uh, Donald Santiago had led 147 to 133 after one, he has a one pin lead here after four, 42 to 41. Our defending champion, Jack Sanek. At the midpoint of the match, the fifth box of the middle string. Looking over the one, four, seven, and nine. Also some rolling wood. As we noted last week when Jack was here, it was a big day in the Sanic family in July of this year when his dad, Mike, was inducted into the International Candleton Hall of Fame. And deservedly so, being a superb bowler, Candleton bowler, over many, many years. Jack having some difficulty. Roll to find 133 opening string, but... Uh, has had his struggles since then. So, so close to getting the spare, but the nine pin would not go down. A ten. Our challenger... Don Santiago. He's got a split here with no wood to help. Two and four on the left, six and ten on the right. Surprised him. Did not expect that he would miss everything. Made a great effort in getting them all, left just the 10 pin. side by side. He also has the four, seven, and eight. Or if you want, it's the three alone on the right, and over on the left it's the two, four, seven, and eight. A ten. In the first string, bowlers were about 20 pins ahead of what they are right now in this second one. Time called, Ralph Stewart wants to check a piece of wood that appears as if it's coming this side of the deadwood line. Now it's rolling back again, and if it stays there, and it's going to, it will be in play. And Jack Sanek makes it. So he began this uh, middle string with a spare and then went dry for the next five boxes. Two full on the head pin, a spread eagle. Two more.
Donald Santiago. He put together Spears in the second and third and hasn't had any since then. After rolling a fine opening string of 147 and missing by one pin of having three strikes in a row. He has a strike, then nine drop, and a, another strike. Since we don't have any uh, long-term champions anymore, people who seem to be on for long, long periods of time, the question was asked, who does hold the record for the most consecutive victories? Well, that belongs to Stacia Zernike. She had won 18 in a row before she was defeated in her 19th week. Donald Santiago missed what he had left here. And then it's Tony Carroll, and he was defeated after 14 victories in the 15th week. Fran Honorado with 12, defeated in the 13th week. Joe Donovan, Tony Marie Baldinelli, Don Patchell, Barry Lang, Marcel Aiken, and Tim Lipke all were able to have 11 victories in a row, losing in the 12th. And in the double figures, Pete Iannuzzo and Walter Finn each had 10 victories in a row before losing. And to make it statistically complete in double figures, the two who went into the 10th week and lost in the 10th week after nine victories were John Miller and Max Valentin. Jack Sanek almost had a hammer. Left one, the four pin. And in the tenth box of the middle string, our defending champion comes up with a spare, which will, he hopes, Break a hundred for him. He gets. He has six, and that does put him at 102. Donald Santiago. with a square leave, the six and the ten. And just barely, only because there was wood there, he had missed the six pin entirely, but was fortunate there was wood off to the left, which carried through. Love called by our love line judge and referee, Ralph Stewart. So it's zero, the fill. And so Jack Sonic will uh, be the winner of the medal string. But uh, he's not particularly uh, happy about it because he only rolled a 102 and picked up four pins at that time. It is worth $50 uh, in a gift certificate from Eastern Clothing of Watertown for men's clothing and also another $50 in bonus money. And the score right now Ten pins separating our bowlers at the end of two. Our challenger, Donald Santiago, 245. Our defending champion, Jack Sanek, 235. Challenger, Donald Santiago, leading off in the third string and leading in the match by ten pins. He had a 14-pin lead after one.
Fair. Don Riley has pointed out to me that the five current leaders for our next championship show, the True Value Championship show, nine-pin drop for Donald Santiago and the two-pin to pick up for another mark. Gary Carrington with his 435 in first place. Donald Santiago has it. Then the others in scores that will probably be supplanted by others. It's highly unlikely that they will stand up. Det Klein with a 402, Biff Cardran with a 402, Jack Sanek with a 401, and Al Johnson with a 377. Not that time. It's a nine box. There it is. You, even those of you who uh, are legally blind or actually blind and who uh, join us every week knew by the reaction of the gallery here that that was a strike. Now Donald Santiago trying to make it three in a row. He gets seven, and he has one of, as I refer to them, those triangles, which is made up of the two, four, and five with no wood. He made it. So another $50 in bonus money. And he has a... Does he? Yes. A slow motion strike. The five pin just kept hanging there, hanging there, hanging there, hanging there, and finally it went. He's up to $250 in bonus money. Jack Sonic's first ball gets him four. His object pin will be the two. And he did not hit it, as he got four and seven out of there. And a couple of more. One, two, four, eight, no wood. Got a couple, but the one and the eight still there. A ten. Now let's see how long uh, our challenger, Don Santiago, can continue this streak. He has four in a row. And the first ball gets him seven. And he's left with the one, three, and ten. Nope. So the fill will be nine, and uh, the bonus streak has stopped after four. Waiting for wood to settle down. A ten. His best total so far. In the two previous strings, he's been at 71 and 51 at this particular point. And has a good spare leave. Five and nine. And wood to the left of the five and in front of the five and nine. 
And he hits another mark. Jack Sennett gets. Is he going to get it? Yes! Finally! Finally, the nine pin fell. Boy, that's tough. I'll tell you, he gets seven on that first one, and what does he have? The eight, nine, and ten. One piece of wood off to the left. He has studied it. It went! What a shot! Take another look at that as he used that piece of wood to get the eight. Nine and ten. Look at the way the wood and the ball reacted. What a shot. Now Donald Santiago. He gets eight more and has a spare lead with the one and three. another by the hair of his chinny chin chin but he made it six no wood one three seven ten Got the one and three, the seven and ten still there. It's a nine. One twenty eight through eight. Jack Sennett working on a spare. He had a spare, and what a spare on his strike. He gets eight and he has an excellent spare lead. The two and four. He has it. Three in a row and another $50 in bonus money for Jack Sanek. But after a disappointing 102, actually each had a very disappointing middle string. Each has to come back. Two full on the head pin spread eagle. Oh, that hurts. And you want to hit the head pin, but you want to hit it a fraction to the right or to the left to get a pocket hit. It's a seven opposite a nine. Down 37 pins going into the final two. So it would seem that Donald Santiago would have this one. Five and six side by side, and in back of that, the nine and ten. One piece of wood off to the left. Let's see if he can make that start something going left to right and nope he did not get it missed the piece of wood see if he can get it this time he did and he got two of the four so it's an eight box and a 136 he needs a mark here if he's going to hit 400 and it does not seem he'll get it because he has no wood to help and he had one pin more than a spread eagle. He's left the three on the left side, the two, four, seven, on the right, the three, and the six. 
He will not have 400. A pair of eight. Jack Sanek leaves six. Leaves two. It's a ten. Almost a strike. Nine pin. Bear, 121 plus. And a strike, 131. And we have a new champion, Donald Santiago, after Three tries previously in which he ran into Buzz Sauce, who threw at him Dan Murphy a 456, Tom Osa a 443, and Dick O'Connell a 414. He rolls to find 389 himself and wins it over Jack Sanek, 389 to 366. Well, what a Christmas present this will be. I said last week would be a great Christmas present when it was worth $800. Now it is up to $850. And not a bad total, uh, both bowlers combined, 755, because we get lots of guesses somewhere in the area between, oh, say, 720 and 760. Uh, you folks are, yeah, you do your homework, I know. Look at all of them that are in here. What I'm looking forward to at this moment is the fact that when we get a winner, not only we'll be making somebody happy with a whole lot of money, but we'll also be emptying out this, and uh, it'll be a lot easier to turn. As you know, all of these cards are from folks like you out there who have sent in one card per day. That's all we allow. Making sure that it is a postcard, not a letter. And taking a guess as to what the total pinfall would be, both bowlers combined, on the day that you hope that I reach my fat fingers in there and draw the card. But uh, we allow 10 either side, so uh, it doesn't have to be right on the nose. Today, we, the total is 755, both bowlers combined. That means anywhere from 745 to 765 would win the $850. But as always, even if the person is nowhere near that, uh, he or she will receive a special prize. Now first, where do you send the card? Well, you send it along to Candleton Bowling, WCBB TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, 02192. Got that? All right, now as I told you, there are always some prizes for the person whose card is chosen. Here are those prizes today. Schaefer's ballpoint and pencil set in exciting fashion colors. These fine writing instruments come gift box are engravable, backed with Schaefer's lifetime guarantee and made in the USA. And a Jerry Redding gift set. Conair and Jerry Redding products bring you the finest in hair care today. Jerry Redding mousse and milk and honey shampoo plus Conair professional hair styling brushes. And Ames Deluxe pruning shears, the perfect tool to help keep your roses and other live plants and shrubs trimmed for healthier growth. They cut clean and crisp for years. Boy, this would be a perfect time to have a nice Christmas present for somebody. The total is $7.55. Anywhere from $7.45 to $7.65 will win $850. Let's see whether I have drawn the lucky card. Mrs. Alma Harris, uh, Rochester East Department 24, East Rochester, New Hampshire. And her guess is $7.29. So... Yeah, I know. So it goes to $900 next week. $275 in the high-low jackpot. Donald, you pick a lane and fire away.
twice you were robbed today, huh? <laughs> All right, Jack. You did it before, and you can do it again. Well, whatever the song goes. No! All right, Jack. I, I thought maybe since you had done it once before, you know, as a as the runner-up. Oh, come on. That's not luck. That's skill. I, you've got to be good in your family, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, here it is uh, today, the smaller trophy, a $50 gift certificate from Eastern Clothing for being our uh, runner-up and one also for winning the middle string and $150 in bonus money to go to $350. Not a bad day. It's nice to see you again. All right. Donald Santiago, after four times coming up here and having people throw a big bomb at you, you finally are our champion. That's a nice Christmas present for you, and uh, let's see, money-wise, seven hundred for winning, three hundred dollars in bonus money, and you just missed a thousand dollars when that ten pin stayed up. I thought I had that strike. I thought you did too. Boy. Well, we'll see you next week, and you'll be coming back as defending champion. Bernie Duhamel will be the challenger. Don Gillis for everybody here. Merry.